So it turns out I owe you an apology, and um, I'll just just say outright that I'm sorry. I failed you. Uh, this is supposed to be the daily Google News, and I missed a big, big bomb drop, and I don't know why I missed it other than, honestly, I've just been kind of busy. I've been traveling a little bit for conferences and stuff, but no excuses. No excuses. So I was interviewing uh, Amit Cabra today, who's my new best friend, Google Ads guru, really, really brilliant human, and she said, um, she just mentioned passing. She's like, oh yeah, Google delayed the um, you know, the, the, uh, what would you call it? Destruction of third party cookies. And uh, I was like, well, blah, blah, blah. when did this happen? Cause I know, you know, the delay, they delayed it prior to, but it was a month ago, a month ago. Um, when was this June 24th, a month ago, Google said, um, that they're going to push this back to late 2023, uh, which is, um, <laughs> nearly two years later than its initial time frame of early 2022. So, that's good news, but it also means some things. I think the only reason that Google would delay this is because their flock trials aren't working. And, you know, the S, or WSJ here is going to go on and say that, that it's because Google hasn't been able to get buy-in from people. I don't think that Google waits for buy-in from folks. And historically, that has been the case. They just sort of roll out what they need to roll out, and then everybody gets on board. And interestingly, they're generally, if not right, at least in a position to... Um, in a position to strengthen their 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 assertions through the use of massive amounts of money and technology until they make themselves right, basically. So I have a feeling that um, this is, if you think about it, it came right on the heels of their flock trials. They were at 0.5% um, for their initial trial, rolled it out to 5% for a subsequent trial, and then all of a sudden said, you know what, <laughs> we still need cookies for some time. So I think this is really good news. It also... Um, probably speaks to some of the fear that some of us have been voicing just in terms of the inability for Flock to replace um, everything. Uh, this is interesting, though. Google and Apple have each faced complaints from the ad industry that changes they're making will strengthen their own ad business. Yes, of course. But that's the other thing, too, is why are we blaming them for that? You know, like, when did these folks become NGOs? Uh I'm something of a rabid libertarian, but this is one of those areas where I just say, you know what, we need to, we need to not leave the regulation to the entities themselves, or they're going to act in a self-interested manner, and so too should they. That's kind of their job and their point. Um, the European Union said it's investigating Google's plan to remove cookies as part of a wide-ranging uh, inquiry into allegations that Google has abused its prominent role. Now, that's interesting, too. So, and there's another little note there that talks about different states that have filed a lawsuit against Google for the uh, destruction of third-party cookies, which is all interesting because it was the legislative bodies that were pushing Google towards killing third-party cookies in the first place. So it's kind of like a damned-if-you-do, damned-if-you-don't situation. Um, what are the other highlights? Uh, early technical testing of Flock is slow. Uh, Google's also pushing back when we're going to be able to utilize Flock, which isn't surprising at all, given that the user adoption has been so slow on Google's end. I mean, they're not pushing it out to their users. Uh, I love that what Mr. Kleber here says. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name. Everything about how Flock works is very much subject to change. That doesn't inspire much confidence. Um, so the plan is Google's going to complete testing of all of its new cookie replacing technologies uh, and integrate them into Chrome before late 2022. Bet money that's late. And then once that's done, they're going to phase out cookies. It's going to be a 90-day period. Um, and by the end of 2023, we'll be a cookie-less world. Um, a really interesting note, two rival web browsers that promote privacy, Mozilla and Brave, have said they aren't supporting Flock, which isn't a surprise at all. Um, this is interesting. We're watching the arms race, uh, the digital arms race, and everybody's sort of, you know, choosing their sides. And um, how do arms races end? I guess in Cold Wars, right? Or in real wars. And, you know, in, in this particular instance, the real war, metaphorically speaking, might actually benefit the advertisers the most because what's going to end up happening is you're going to see Google and Facebook and Apple doing things in order to in order to entice people over into their direction because this is all gonna it's all gonna be built on user adoption um, whoever gets the users wins the protocol and that's I guess always been true right I mentioned in another video that you know the difference between VHS and beta has always been really interesting to me because beta was a better technology but VHS had better marketing um, and so VHS won out 
and it was all just based off of user adoption. If if you know your 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 proliferation of, of technology through the user base reaches and exceeds critical mass, then it's it's more likely to um, to to grow. And there are other examples of that, many of them. And uh, so you know this isn't just about who's going to create the best and most reliable platform. It's also about how that platform is going to integrate and in interrelate with all of the other potential platforms because you're, it's all, it's like a maze. You know, Google's going to roll out this technology and Amazon's like, well, we're definitely blocking that. And, you know, you have major browsers that are saying, yeah, we're not using that. And, and so now the question is, well, can Google, can Google, you know, you're playing risk, basically. Can they uh, surround their enemies uh, enough to be able to um, mitigate any damage that those people are doing? Uh, and if not, what's the pivot? What's the adjustment? What's the answer? Um, I think that Google and Apple are actually in really good situations. They're in really good positions because they have, in different ways, they have self-contained ecosystems. Um, Google has, the entire Google suite of products is so prolific that it ends up it ends up owning such a major facet of the internet that it's really hard to say no to Google. Um, and I'm thinking honestly specifically about Google Analytics, which is flipping brilliant. Um, it's absolutely brilliant what they've done. You know, that, that tool that they gave away for free um, that they now basically get to use to monitor the, the entirety of the internet. And then, you know, everything that they, that we use for free as well from a data and acquisition standpoint, um, that really entrenches Google, obviously. Apple is interesting because it's, it's Alamode in a lot of ways. Um, Apple has its own hardware, its own network, kind of. You know, so where, where Google has... Google lives on top of the internet. Apple is like the window through which we, we reach it. And, you know, your, your, your smartphone and your laptop and your computer um, and your, your watch. And, you know, if you're an Apple user, you're an Apple user all the way. And, and Apple has found a way to, you know, carve out this entire user base and basically um, maintain control as to how those people access and are accessible. And, and they're the more affluent users, which is interesting. Um, I don't know if they're the first movers, though. You know, you would think that you know, the Apple users would put... I'm going to say things that are disparaging, so I hope everybody forgives me for just playing around here in my head, but I don't think that the Apple users are the influentials that they think they are. I actually think that they're the followers, um, as evidenced by the fact that they kind of, you know, follow along with the, the Apple-driven narrative. Um, I think that the, the people that are pushing the envelope might not necessarily be Apple users, and so that could be point Google. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? You know, I could be wrong. Um, anything that doesn't have three legs or more to stand on is done. Uh, and not done completely, but just at the mercy of, you know, all the other, all the other conduits. So Facebook is a really good example. Um, Facebook has to be ask, accessed through a browser or through a, a device. Um, so that means that Apple gets to limit Facebook and Google gets to limit Facebook, or at least monitor Facebook. Um, Amazon is that way too. You know, Amazon's heavily browser-based, but, uh, well, A, Amazon has AWS, now that I think about it. So, you know, and what do they host? 30% of the front-facing web world or something I've seen? Um, that's interesting to think about. Amazon Web Services could end up becoming a massive contender in the data play game, depending on how it is that they're allowed to use that data, given that they're like the grandfather, right? So what, what are the terms of service there, and what are they allowed to do, and what are they not? Uh, the benefit that Amazon has is they have reached critical mass to a point that it's, you know, it's unimpeachable, you know, as far as I'm concerned, for, for, from two angles, too, from the consumer and from the vendors. Although I, I can see Amazon's vendor base collapsing under its own weight, uh, a, because the competition is getting too heavy, and B, because Amazon keeps, and oh, I don't know if you all know this, but they'll like see what products are selling and then go produce their own products and roll out their own brand. It's horrible. Um, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's capitalism, and it is what it is. But um, if I were a vendor, I would be desperately trying to get out of under Amazon's thumb as often and as quickly as possible. So we'll see. This is all really interesting. It's fun to see it take shape. Um, I'm disappointed in myself for not catching that. It's funny because somebody else said something to me. Uh, it might have been on a podcast. They said something about Google pushing back the deadline, and they've done it so many times that I just assumed they were talking about a prior, a prior event. Um, so I'll do better at keeping my finger to the pulse. 
Uh, I hope that these videos are helpful to y'all. And uh, if you have any uh, other ideas that I haven't, I haven't stumbled upon, I'd be really interested in them. This is, this is such an exciting time. It's a little scary when you own a business that's dependent upon all this stuff, but it's also like, you know, it's the creation of the new world. Um, the internet was so free for so long and the 20 year old me, you know, the anarcho capitalist would say like, ah, oh, zero regulation, blah, blah, blah. But I understand the need for it. Uh, and, and now it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it is that we leash it and where those leashes exist and who's holding, uh, the controlling end of them. And, and I think that there's some, I think there's some money to be made there. I think that if you can, you know, you don't even necessarily have to be all the way right. You just have to not be wrong. And, um, you know, heading in one direction or the other could really position you in a pretty positive light. So uh, I'd be interested in y'all's guesses as well, because you might inform me and teach me. And in the meantime, as always, thank you so much for subscribing, for watching, and for listening, and for commenting. Um, I'm having such a blast with all of this. And, uh, yeah, I'm grateful to and for all of you. And uh, if you this is your first time watching, I shoot a video every day. So like, comment, subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks so much.